So let's see if we can combine some of these commands onto this um, next little exercise. I'm going to go into perspective view and I'm going to grab this topo surface that we created in this exercise and I'm going to copy it using CO, enter, and I'm going to copy it using a base point on this outer um, polyline here. I'm going to use that endpoint and match it up with this endpoint here. And now that should be um, matched up in place. So we have an edge here that is not filled and that's totally fine. We're gonna deal with that in a second. What I'd like to do is use these outside edges to split this topographical surface and then project these points on and add um, a couple trees to this so that we have a little bit more of a landscape. So we can project curves to a surface using the project curves or control points. So I'm gonna use this command and just hit the button here in the toolbar. It says select curves and points to project. So I can select all of the curves that I would like to project onto the surface, as well as the points. So I'm gonna just hit these points that are in the middle of these trees. And I'll hit enter when I'm done. And now it's gonna say select surfaces, um, poly surfaces, sub Ds and meshes to project onto. So I will select my topographical surface and press enter. And now if we go over to our um, perspective view, you can see that those lines have been projected down onto those, uh, onto the topography. So they're no longer flat and planar, or the inputs are still flat and planar, but it's made a copy and projected the copies down onto that. I usually like to group my um, projections so that I can easily access them. Um, so I'm going to, select the surface, and then I wanna do a split to divide this into different materials. So SP for split. Select the cutting objects. I can now just select the group that I just made. Press enter. And Rhino is going to split this up into different parts. So now, not only do we have a topographical surface, but we also have different material areas. So if I wanted this um, to be a paving area, and I wanted all of these to be planting areas, maybe I want just the landforms to be planting, and I want these lower parts to be, you know, water-filled pools or depressions in the landscape that have a different material, I can then do that. We also have the points for the trees located on our uh, topography now. And so the instructions say, copy in a placeholder tree silhouette and set to points. So you have all a reference silhouette um, file in your Rhino folder. I'm going to just open that up now and drag in a couple of the trees from that file. So I've just copied and pasted in the trees and in order to find where they are, I'm gonna use ZSA because they come in as selected. So if I use zoom select at all, Rhino is gonna take me directly to their location on the board. And I'm gonna use M for move and grab them by their points. So I'm just gonna turn off end and near and all of these other ones and just select their points. Oh, and they're really close to the origin here. So not too far away. Okay, I'm just gonna uh, bring them over here and then I'm going to take this tree and use move selecting it at its point and connect it up with a point on the surface there. I'm gonna do the same with this tree, a little bit larger tree. I'm gonna uh, connect it with, this, with the point that's on the surface. And I'm just gonna copy them using copy the CO command. So now we have um, a little bit of a landscape here. Uh, if we were to assign these different materials um, in our layers palette, maybe we would make them grass or planting, change their layer, give them a bit of a color. I'm just gonna select a green color. And now we already have kind of like a really basic landscape square happening here. The last thing I'm gonna do with this piece is to create a bounding seating edge using these two offset polylines on the edge. I'm gonna select those and we're going to make an extrusion. So I will use the EXT command, that's extrude. You can see as soon as I hit that, that it uh, lifts or 
lowers this based on where I'm dragging my mouse. And you can have some options here. So you can output a surface, a sub D, which is a different type of surface in Rhino. I'm gonna keep it on surface. You can choose a direction. Uh, you can choose to have it um, extrude to both sides, which in this case we, uh, we may want to do. We can choose to have it as a solid. And I would always recommend when you're building walls, for example, you usually want them to be solid. So that means it's gonna have a cap on the end. If you don't choose a solid, this will be an open, um, an open set of uh, surfaces without a cap on either end. So I'm gonna select solid. I don't wanna delete the input. And all that I have to do now is select a, a height that I want these to go up to. So I don't know exactly how high I want this to be, but I know that I want it to extend to the base of the lowest landform as well as the height of the highest landform. So maybe what I'll do is turn back on some of my, um, my points and I'm just going to select the lowest point um, that I can, which is this base point over here. So now I have a wall that goes all the way around this landscape. It um, extends in both directions from my uh, zero point to the same height. Of course, in real life, we wouldn't really need a wall that does this, but maybe we have a secret garden or an enclosed, um, an enclosed plaza space or enclosed garden space, and we're going to create some kind of a gateway um, for access from uh, elsewhere on the site. Um, so we could do that by um, drawing a rectangle onto, onto this wall. And I've just used the vertical rectangle tool. And there's a few things that I could do to punch through this wall. Uh, one thing I could do is use the make hole command. It's gonna say select planar closed curves, that's this, enter. And it says select surfaces or poly surfaces. I select my wall. I press enter and then I can just choose to um, cut through the entire object and I'm going to say um, I'm going to actually just drag it to a certain um, depth point instead so I'm going to drag it to the end of this wall like that and now I have a hole in my wall and I could do the same thing on this side so I draw a vertical rectangle where I want my opening to be use make hole select my curves and press enter the poly surfaces enter and then just drag it to the edge where i want to make the hole so now i have uh, an enclosed garden it's got a build-up wall all around the edge and i have um, two openings in it that allow passage through 